brings us to Acrisure Stadium on the North Shore of the Steel City, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Today, it's the opener of the 2023 NFL season, as it'll be the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. with 11 Super Bowl titles between them. The Niners and Steelers underway to begin 2023. Returning from his end zone is Ray Ray McLeod. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid and he's dropped at the 18. going to the air right away. That's over the middle and caught by Ayu. They'll come up second and seven. Purdy will set up to throw it here. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. Well, what a way to kick off the year here. Niners and Steelers, and I know the folks back in Northern California are happy to see their quarterback, Brock Purdy, back out there. But Charles, what do you see from him in year two? More of what we saw from him in year one, probably, because this young man, he really sees the reins in that first season, and he is excited about expanding his game and pushing the ball downfield even more in year two as a starter with the 49ers. Wisnowski on to punt as he sends this one away. On the return is Peterson. A very good return there. Give him an even 20 yards. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. You don't see that too often, Charles. He punted that away and then hustled up to make the stop as well. Yeah, because oftentimes they serve as their own safety after punting it. You want to be the last guy, but he decided to get involved in the action, didn't he? And what a spark that's got to provide for the rest of his team when they see their punter out there making a nice hit. Now the third-year man, Najee Harris. And a lane slow and materializing there as he'll get maybe a yard up to the 45. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. There he goes, right side. Down the right sideline. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Najee Harris, 55 yards. And the Steelers are on the board here first in the season opener. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. And he's one for one on the new year as his kick is good. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Cat signal four and take it successfully. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. And one of the things we like to hit on every year are the new rule changes. And we got a few for 2023. A lot of procedural having to do with deadlines and roster construction and such. But, but two kind of caught my eye, Charles. One is the option to fair catch a kickoff and have it come out to the 25 like it does in college. You like that? I don't. I don't like it at all. I don't like it in college. I don't like it in the NFL. I want to have something different. And I really wanted the special teams coaches to be a little bit more involved. But I do understand why the league is doing it. They believe it promotes safety, and it's hard to argue against that. What about, this is the other one, guys can now wear the number zero. We've already seen some make the switch, Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Swift, Braxton Berrios, amongst others. Yeah, and you know something, when you see those guys make that move, I don't mind that at all, all right? A little more expressionism for these guys, I love it. I just think we didn't go far enough. What about double zero, like Jim Otto used to wear, or Kenny Burrow used to wear? Let's add that back. 
to the NFL jerseys. Throwing on second down, it's Purdy. And looking for Kittle, but it's intercepted. Picked up by DeMonte Casey. And he'll take it across midfield to the 46-yard line. They'll send a receiver in motion to the right. Now they'll fake the jet sweep, and now here's Pickett. Hot play action. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, how about that? The defense's first sack. It doesn't come from one of the usual suspects up front. It comes from the secondary. Yeah, I think they caught the quarterback off guard a little bit because he wasn't able to account for the possibility of that blitz and change the blocking assignment. He comes through and puts him on the ground. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. George Pickens, the intended target. And now it's third down. It's now third down and 14. From the gun, here's Pickett. A throw out wide, going to be incomplete. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. On fourth down, punt coming from Braden Mann. Back to return it, Christian McCaffrey. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. But not an ideal way to end their previous drive. They threw the interception, Charles, after they had built up some momentum and were moving the football. But something to at least build on for this offense as they run back out here. Yeah, you're right about that. Up until that last play, everything was working pretty well for this offense. Gaining chunks of yardage, getting first downs, really making a push for the end zone and looked like they had a nice rhythm going. Now you got to have a short memory here. Don't focus on the interception. Focus on what came before it and get back to it. Back to the air on second down, Purdy. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. That was not a real confident throw right there, and he's just two of seven to start the game. Now he's going to have to find a groove with a big third down coming up. Let's see if his confidence can increase. And it is caught. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. It's a game of 25 yards. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And he stopped immediately there. Second and 10. Purdy looking to throw. He'll fire this deep for Ayuk. Oh, and his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. Picked up by DeMonte Kazin. And the Steelers are going to get the football here as he gets this up past the 20-yard line. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. From the 25, here's second and six. They run again with Harris. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. 
back-to-back four-yard runs. Now look, if they just do that all the way downfield, ball ends up in the end zone, but that's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I think now third and two, that defense ready to stiffen up and stop that run. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Now Pickett will look to pass it. And the Niners get there and bring him down. Javon Hargrave, the D tackle, getting the sack. An excellent play by Hargrave, who was a pro bowler in 2021. And was even better in 2022. Had his best year as a pass rusher with 11 sacks and was rewarded with a massive free agent contract. On second down, this is Harris. And now off to the races, down the right side. Najee Harris, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Najee Harris, already his second touchdown here in this opening weekend. And the Steelers have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Boswell for the extra point. And this is no good. Missed the PAT, so they fail to connect. And this remains a 13-0 game. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked out officially at the 21. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. And they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. All right, guys, you had your fun? All right. Throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. Now Purdy. That ball caught Brandon Ayuk. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Once more, Purdy looking to throw. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. Here's Purdy. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked up by Mika Fitzpatrick. And the Steelers are going to have great field position here as this is returned just shy of midfield. Boy, so another interception, C.D., and it feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out some of these mistakes, though, because now his head coach, his offensive coaches, they have to evaluate whether you keep playing him and let him work through it, or you start thinking about going to his backup. Jair Brown on the stop there. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and six. Here's Pickett. Finds Pickens out right. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory even if they don't get it though. Harris running straight ahead. And he's going to run into a brick wall right in the middle of the field. And I don't think he got there. 
Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. He's having a big game running the football, but that one will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't he? They run for it with Harris. And I'm not sure he got there. Did they stop him? They did. He needed a yard. He didn't get anything. And the 49ers are going to get the football back. Even though they didn't get it, probably the right call. Too long for a field goal and just not a whole lot to gain from a punt there. Yeah, you wouldn't have really netted very much yardage if you punted the ball, right? And the thing about a field goal, and you know this from so much experience, the longer the field goal, the lower it comes out off the kick, right? Which means it's got a better chance of being blocked. So you're taking a chance either way. I like the fact they went for it. Darnold will hand off to McCaffrey. And he'll get it down here to the 43. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A first down throw, Darnold. He'll drop it off to McCaffrey. Two yards on the pickup there, and it's second down. Darnold trying to hustle everybody along with the clock moving. Here's second and eight. That's to the right side, complete to Kittle. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. They give those two yards right back, and now they're looking at a third and ten. We'll put that one in the win column for the defense. Trying to contain tight ends in the passing game is so difficult nowadays, but they did in a big way there. Here's Purdy now on third and goal. And that's going to be incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. They came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice, an ambitious effort, but it's well short. And the deficit will hurt Pat at 13. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. A kind of a lucky break on the prior drive, Charles. The turnover on downs that the offense had didn't come back to bite them after the other side, their defense came through, was able to hold them without any points. I would agree with you, Paul. A little bit of a lucky break indeed, but you know what they'd say to us? No luck, just pure skill. We rose to the challenge, and we didn't permit a score. That's how we roll. Well, I'm kind of curious, Charles, if they might temper their aggressiveness now offensively if they get in that fourth down spot again. Yeah, one would think so, but maybe because they held them, they might go for it again. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. And that will be incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. Out now is the punter, Braden Mann. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. They're certainly in need of some kind of points here before the end of the half. A field goal or something being shut out right now. They can really use some momentum before they head into halftime. First down now, but that clock rolling. Birdie. That's caught. It's McCaffrey again. 
The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with 23 seconds to go till halftime. Looked like a pretty good, safe play right there. No, he's had trouble with the interceptions in this game there. Hits his guy out in the flat. Yeah, so many times we hear quarterbacks and offensive coordinators talk about that his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked up by Devontae Casey. And a potential turning point as they get the football in very good field position late in this first half. To the air on first down with Pickett. That's going to be caught by Pickens. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. Well, that doesn't have quite the flair of some of Pickens' catches from his rookie year, but it still moves the chains. He quickly built up a rep for making highlight grabs, maybe the catch of the year in week three versus the Browns. He also had 800 yards, and he looked like an absolute playmaker for the Steelers. Now a first down carry for Harris. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Najee Harris on his way to a monster game. Three first half touchdowns. And the Steelers are looking good here in the season opener as they're able to extend their lead. Boswell good with the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to an even 20. So just eight kicks remaining here in the first half as they'll kick this one away. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Indeed, start on the ground to run that clock. And he's going to lose yardage. Not that it matters as the final seconds tick away. Time for a break. We've hit halftime. Two quarters down. Two still remain. We step aside. This is the NFL on EA Sports. And we welcome you back live now inside the booth alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, set and ready to rock for the third quarter. We'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. Olszewski going to hold on to this one. Touchback. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead now, a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game is a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it. And in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. 186 yards rushing for him now here in week one. A very solid start to this new campaign. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll run again with Harris. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Second and seven. Now a give, running left is Harris. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. 
It's rare that a man his size can't at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? <laughs> you talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a group effort to get a guy like that down and not let him find some space. The first guy in, he's got to take one for the team, right? Because he's just waiting there and holding on for everyone else to help him out. Looking to throw, pick it. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Talanoa Hufanga. And the Niners are going to take possession here at their own 47-yard line. At their own 47-yard line. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. They start near midfield following the interception as they begin first and ten. Purdy throw pulled in by Kittle. It'll go as a gain of four. And that will bring up second down. And quickly they get to the line. Play action. Now Purdy. And now here is another interception. And the Steelers are going to have great field position here as this is returned just shy of midfield. Well, there's two sides to this coin. I mean, on one side, five interceptions now thrown for him. That's tough. But, man, this defense, they have been ball hawking and impressive. But, Charles, let's flip it back over. If you're coaching a quarterback that's struggling this much at this stage of the game, do you maybe try to get him out? I would think about it, and i think about it awfully hard. But also... You might want to look into his eyes, see what he has. He might be one of those players that you don't want to affect his confidence by actually pulling him out of the game. So you have to know your player. You have to know the situation. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. Second and ten, third quarter of the season opener. They'll try the right side with Harris. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. A Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. It's been an excellent day for him running the football, no doubt, as he continues to soar well past 100 yards. Yeah, it almost feels like he can just grab his briefcase and head home after putting in a full day's work at the office, doesn't it? Off the play fake, here's Pickett. This is caught inside the 15. And in for the Steelers' touchdown. Deontay Johnson, 39 yards. And the Steelers take the interception on defense and convert it into six points. Good throw there, and I don't want to blow it too out of proportion, but he looks a lot more comfortable in his second season. You can tell he put the work in in the offseason, and what I mean by that is understanding the playbook, not just the plays and how to execute them, but how to do it against a variety of defenses, also understands his team better, what they can and cannot do. You can see the confidence rising in him as he plays. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD. And if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this play out, let's just say it's been unusual. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and ten. Purdy will set up to throw it here. And my goodness, another interception. 
picked off by DeMonte Kazin. And the Steelers are going to take over at their own 30-yard line. Charles, are you kidding me? Four interceptions? I mean, that's a good season for a lot of defensive backs. A lot of reason to get voted into the Pro Bowl. When you have four in one game, I mean, talk about a campaign slogan, right? I got four. Send me to the Pro Bowl, guys. What a game we've experienced watching this one. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Pick it now to throw off the play fake. Here's Johnson with a reception. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. First and 10 at the 46 yard line. They hand this off to Harris. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. We are through three quarters here on NFL Kickoff Weekend. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Pick it'll look to throw it here. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Fred Warner. There he goes, left side. Down the left sideline. And into the end zone. A pick six for the 49er D as they score the touchdown. This game's still fairly well in hand, but I think now you, you go conservative, don't you? Go into your shell, just run the football. I think you have to, but you also have to tell your backs, make sure you're really protecting the football because you're going to run into a stacked defensive front, which is why they were throwing the football before, trying to make sure they just get their backs, you know, really beat up in that situation. Now, good luck to them. And there's a quick momentum swing. INT return for a pick six, and then the two-point conversion good. And even if you're keeping your wits about you, you're thinking to yourself, okay, extra point block team going into the game now. All of a sudden you're hearing defense. Everyone's scrambling for their helmets and throwing down their cups of water. That's a great position for them to be in, trying to score against that team. A little bit disjointed. Olszewski now from his end zone. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled it to 15. At their own 15-yard line. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. And that pick six a moment ago doesn't change things too much. They still seem pretty comfortable with a three-possession fourth-quarter lead. Hit and drop behind the line by Dre Greenlaw. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. Pressure gets to him, and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. The pressure from multiple guys there as they bury him for a big nine-yard loss. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. On third down, here's Harris. And trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. Well, that was a third and long run, and to me, that was just a wave the white flag kind of a situation. Obviously, they don't want to risk the chance of throwing it downfield and risking a turnover in this section of the field. Fielded at the 33. 
A great return there of 22 yards. And the Niners set up well. They take over first and 10 on the short side of the field. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Got a man. That's Ayuk. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Second and six. At the a second down throw for Purdy. Got a man right side. It's McCaffrey. They'll wind up getting just a yard out of it. And now third down and six to go. And Purdy, he's going to shift them around into something else. Out of the gun now on third down. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Shotgun handoff down to McCaffrey. He's able to get six. A nice pickup down to the 21. And now they're in the hurry up. They'll bring a receiver in motion right. Back to throw. Purdy. Over the middle, and he's got Gray. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Purdy now to throw. He'll get this out right here to McCaffrey. Touchdown! Christian McCaffrey, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Niners have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. To throw is Purdy. Completed the one. And they are three for three on two-point conversions as he is into the end zone for the score. Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. Olszewski now from his end zone. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled at the 15. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. And boy, the strength on display there as he rumbles through tacklers for a gain of about eight. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking. Nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage. Stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to. And right now they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because they're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score. But they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit them with a big play. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. The Steelers send out their punter now. He's been terrific so far. And a fair catch taken here right at about the 40-yard line. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And the Niners will go on offense, first and 10. Here's first and 10. Darnold to throw. 
And he can't quite bring it in. Might have heard footsteps there across the middle. Second down. Just over 50 seconds remain. Here's second and 10. Now Darnold. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. Darnold. Pressure comes, and the Steelers take him down. No choice but to go. Here's fourth down now. Fourth down, and for Darnold, it's desperation time. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked up by Demonte Kazin, and the return stops at the 39-yard line. And yes, folks, that is his fifth interception, a new NFL record. And that's absolutely phenomenal. I just have to flat out applaud him. What a great effort in this game. But let's face it, when you look back at the numbers of guys who had had four in the past, you'll find the names of some of the greats and some guys who just had a fantastic game. Well, CD, always a little extra excitement for week one, and one of our early window games here in week one on a Sunday comes to a close. Good to be back in the booth with you, my friend. And it's good to be back in the booth with you as well. And we know that not everyone's going to start the season 1-0, right? Half the league is going to have a loss on their record. But everyone's going to have to build off of that opener. And how many coaches tell us every single year, you make your most progress between week one and week two. We'll see how both of these teams progress the rest of the season. So for Pittsburgh, that'll be a happy locker room as they start the season 1-0. And they'll get another home date next week as the Browns will come to town. Meanwhile, for the Niners, they go down to defeat here in the opener. And they will try to get back in the swing of things next week on the road. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody. Run it back when I throw the run. I'll be back like another van. 